Okay, here we have section 9.3. And so just like in section 9.2, we have all the four cases here, they're the same, except this section, we're actually concentrating on cases three and four, okay? And so with cases three and four, you are not going to be given an angle that is opposite of one of the sides, or you may not even be given an angle at all, okay? So we need to have another method to solve the triangle because law of sines wouldn't be applicable because there would be too many unknowns in your ratios to be able to solve for any other variables. You'd be stuck, okay? So that's why we also have what's called the law of cosines theorem, okay? And the way that this one is developed, I mean, they only do one of them. They don't do all three, but you could similarly just rotate the figure and then prove the other two. Um, but it says, consider the triangle from 9.2. We drew a triangle like this and we cut it in half. And we use that to develop the law of sines, right? Using H and then the sine of this guy and the sine of that guy and all of that good stuff, right? Um, but it says now what they want us to do is they want us to strategically place this triangle onto the um, Cartesian coordinate system or regular coordinate, rectangular coordinate system so that the vertex um, of angle C is at the origin and side B um, lies on top of the positive x axis, okay? The vertex B, angle B, has these coordinates, right? Because it went out A, so A is like the radius, and then it went this angle C. So it's the radius cosine of that angle and then the radius sine of that angle. We know that from our, our um, circular calculus, right? The unit circle and all of that. So that's where these are coming from. They also label them here. And then the coordinates of this terminal um, side is just, it's got an X coordinate of B, but the Y coordinate is zero, so B zero, okay? Now notice that these two points are the same expressions, even whether the, this angle is acute, meaning less than 90 degrees, so on, in this quadrant, or if it's obtuse, being greater than 90 degrees, and then now the dot is out here somewhere. This is still the radius, right? And the coordinates are still R cosine of your angle C and then A sine of C, right? And this point is still the same, it's still B, okay? All that's changed is this angle and then therefore that point is not over here anymore, it's way over there. Okay, so since those points are gonna be exactly the same no matter what kind of angle C is, they want us to use the distance formula to calculate the side opposite of that angle. No matter which scenario it is, we're gonna use the same calculation, okay? And the distance formula says to take this x value minus this x value and square it plus this y value minus this y value square it. So then if I distribute, I FOIL this all out. I mean, if it helps, or actually, you know what? C squared, so I shouldn't have my house. I don't know why I have the house there. That's only if I was trying to solve for C, but I'm not. If I wanted to know what C was, I would have C, which is the distance equal to the square root of all of that, right? But they're asking me for C squared, which means they squared this side and they squared that side. So there is no more house, it's just the expression. So when they have this squared here, I shouldn't have been putting the house on it, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and multiply that out. Cosine of C minus B times A cosine of C minus B and then plus A sine of C squared. So here I'm going to do A squared cosine of C or cosine squared of C and then minus A times B cosine of C 
minus a times b cosine of c plus b squared plus here I get a squared sine squared of c and then I'm going to combine like terms like these two are the same right so I've got um, and then these two both have a squared. So I'm going to write a squared cosine squared of C plus a squared sine squared of C. And these two together are going to make minus, or let me put the plus b squared first, and then those two minus 2ab cosine of C. So that term just came down. Now these I can factor out on a squared and I get cosine squared C plus sine squared C. And then sine squared plus cosine squared or vice versa is just one. So this is all just the one and a squared times one is just a squared. And so notice that all we've done is established this top one cosine squared or c squared equals a squared plus b squared minus 2ab and then cosine of c okay so all of these are going to be the same it's just a matter of labeling it different and then doing the exact same thing right so instead of calling this one c you call it a instead of calling it um C or A, you call this one B, and then you repeat the same process. And that's how they'll prove the other um, two. But how do we use it, right? So let's go ahead and go through an example. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw this. I'm going to call this one A, this one B, this one C. And so A, I know is 35 degrees. Little A, I don't know. Little B, I know is 5. And little c I know is eight, okay? And so then they want me to solve the rest of them. And I don't have anything like the opposite complete in order for me to do that. I don't have two angles so that I could find the third angle. So we really are at a loss, we have no choice. Now we are given angle A. So in that theorem, I'm actually going to be using the one that has angle A in it. So I'm going to be using a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cosine of a. And I'm just going to plug everything that I have in there. So a squared equals um, 5 squared plus 8 squared minus 2 times 5 times 8 cosine of 35 degrees. So A equals the square root of all of that. Let me see, what is that? 25 plus 64 minus, that's 80, cosine of 35. I get 23.467 dot dot dot. So square root of that, A is equal to 4.8, okay? So now I have A. And now that I have A, I have a side opposite, right? So that should be enough for me to now go to, back to law of sines. So if I go back to law of sines, I'm gonna say sine of 35 degrees over this 4.8 should equal sine of B over B. And, or I could have done sine of C over eight, either one, it doesn't matter. Cause as long as I have the one of the other angles, then I can just do the whole subtraction from 180 to get the third, okay? So you choose which one you wanna find next, whether you wanna find B next, angle B, or whether you wanna find angle C next. It's up to you and it doesn't matter, you'll get the same answers. So when I multiply these two, I'm going to get um, sine of B, there's my variable, so multiply those and divide by the other guy. And then B would have to be sine inverse of this value. And so we get B equals um, 
um, 36.7 degrees, which means that 35 degrees plus 36.7 degrees plus C should equal 180 degrees, which means that C equals 180 minus 35 minus 36.7 is 108.3 degrees. And so now we have all the information that we're looking for. All right, okay. So, and then the computer will tell you what, what to round to when it comes to those particular problems. So you'll know exactly what you should be rounding to. Now, the other kind of case we can have is side, side, side. So very easy to see. Um, you don't have any angles, so you cannot possibly um, use the law of sines. So I've got six, across from B is eight, and across from C is five, okay? And so for this one, um, let's go ahead and look at it. Now, this one's got a weird situation happening. Okay, I'm gonna do the first problem. Uh, my pencil is not working. Let me get another one or I'll just use a pen from now on. Okay. So we have to use the law of cosines. Now, which one you want to find first is completely up to you because you have three different formulas with three different angles. So you pick whichever one you want to use. I'm going to use the same formula up there. So I'm going to do a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cosine of a. So a is 6, b is 8, c is 5, so 8, 5, cosine of a. So then I'm going to solve for cosine of A, so subtract. So I'm going to take 36 minus 64 minus 25. I get negative 53 equal to negative 80 cosine of A. And then I'm going to take negative 53 and divide it by negative 80. I get positive 0 0.6625 equals cosine of A, which means A equals cosine inverse of this number. And that means A equals um, 0.6625 is about 48.5 degrees. Okay, so now I know A is 48.5 degrees. So we found one value. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and try to figure out um, B, okay? Now I have a choice. I can go figure out B or I can go figure out C. I just wanna point out something that's gonna happen when I try B. If you had tried C first, then you're, you would have been fine and you would have got the answer. But I want you to also see what happens if you try to find one and how to realize that that's not the answer. Okay, so that's why I'm going to do B first. So I do know of angle and its side that's across from it now. So now I can use law of sines. So I can say sine of 48.5 degrees over 6 equals sine of B over 8. And so then I get sine of B equals cross multiply. over six, so then B equals sine inverse of this fraction. And so then let's see, I get sine inverse of eight sine of 48.5 over six. And I get that B equals um, about 80, Oh gosh, this is going to round it up. So it's going to go to 10, which means it's about 87 degrees. Okay. So if A is 48.3 or 48.5, B is 87, then C 
would have to be 180 minus 48.5 minus 87, it would have to be 44.5 degrees. So does that make sense? Let's see. It, I think it does actually. So let's see what happens. Um, we get, oh yeah, it does make sense. So we get that um, angle C is 44.5 and then B is actually, what is it, 87 degrees? And so you just want to make sure that the smallest angle has the smallest side value, and it does, and then that the biggest angle has the biggest side value. So it actually did work out. Um, let's go see what would happen if we did C instead, okay? So if I did C instead, that means I would be taking this situation over here. So I would be saying sine of 48.5 degrees over six equals sine of C over five, which means that sine of C equals, um, dun, 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 cross multiply five sine of 48.5 degrees over six. So then C would equal sine inverse of five sine of 48.5 degrees over six. So C would equal, let's see, sine inverse of five sine of 48.5 over six. Oh yeah, no, see, I end up with 38.6 degrees. And then if I try to do, to find B, I'm gonna do 48.5 plus 38.6 um, plus B should equal 180. So then B should equal 180 minus 48.5 minus 38.6. I get 92.9 degrees. So then between these two, C is the smallest and it still has the smallest measurement. And um, B is the biggest measurement, 92 degrees, and it has the biggest side. So we have two different situations that can happen, right? We need to know which one is the answer, okay? So the best way to determine which one is actually the answer is to use another law of cosines to see which one you get, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use, um, it doesn't matter, you just try and see which one it matches, okay? So I'm gonna take B squared equal to A squared plus C squared minus two AC uh, cosine of B. So when I plug in B squared, I get 64 equals A squared is 36, C squared is 25, minus two times A is 12, times five is 60, I believe. Yes, 60, cosine of B. So then I'm gonna take 64 and minus 36, minus 25, and then divide by negative 60, I get negative 0 0.05 equals cosine of B, which means B equals cosine inverse of negative 0 0.05, which means B equals 92.9 degrees. So this confirms that this is the answer. And so if that's the answer, then this guy is the answer. And so it's this one that I should have used, not this one, okay? So we did not do anything wrong. We did it completely correct. But unless we verified using the law of cosines, we weren't gonna know which one was correct. So what I would suggest is if you come down to a problem where you have side, 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 you may and you can just do the law of cosines for each, each angle. 
okay? You really only need to do it for two because then once you know two of them, you can just subtract it from 180 and you can find the third. But that is going to be my biggest suggestion when you're doing the side, side, side triangles is that use the law of cosines for two of the angles versus just finding one and then jumping into the law of sines, okay? Because then there's an issue there and you're not gonna know that you have one unless you did it both ways, okay? So to keep yourself away from this situation happening, do the law of cosines twice on a side, side, side triangle. That's the big advice here, okay? So now let's go ahead and look at example three. It says a motorized sailboat leaves Naples, Florida, bound for Key West, 150 miles away. Maintaining a constant speed of 15, 15 miles per hour, but encountering heavy crosswinds and strong currents, the crew finds after four hours that the sailboat is off course by 20 degrees. Begin by drawing a figure to represent the situation. And then it starts asking you all these questions, okay? So first thing I'm gonna do is draw the situation. So I don't know geometry that well, but I'm just gonna call this Naples and I'm gonna call this Key West. So I got a point here and a point there. And um, so where am I driving? I'm going leaves Naples towards Key West and that's 150 miles. And I'm driving in this direction, but because of all the heavy winds and the currents and all of that, I'm actually going off course. So I'm actually going in this direction and it's 20 degrees here because that's how far off course I am. So what they're asking me for, and this is not a right angle, they're asking me, this is where my boat is at. Um, I cannot draw, but this is my little funny boat, okay? This is the boat, where the boat is right now, okay? And so then they're asking me for part A, um, how far is the sailboat from Key West at this time? So how far away is it here, okay? So this is what they're wanting to know. So I'm gonna label this, and I'm gonna do it in different colors. I'm gonna do it in pink. So this is X. They wanna know X. Now, um, I don't really know anything else other than this. So is this enough for me to figure out the problem? Oh yeah, it is. Because it told me here that I was driving for four hours right? I was driving for four hours at uh, 15 miles per hour. So if I multiply that, that means I was driving for 60 miles. So I do know how far I've been driving. It's 60 miles. And that is enough for me to figure it out because I've got a side and a side and the angle in between. So then x squared is going to be 60 squared plus 150 squared minus 2 times 60 times 150 times cosine of that angle 20 degrees. So let's see what we get there. I think I can type in the whole thing. I don't think it'll make my calculator go crazy. 60 squared plus 150 squared minus 2 times 60 times 150 cosine of 20 degrees, a 9186. Okay, I'm gonna say that's how many miles um, it is, it's gone. So that's for part A. So now I know that this is 9186, okay? It says, through what angle should the sailboat turn to correct its course? So at some point I wanna go back over there, right? So it's, now it's asking me, at what angle do I need to turn here so that I can get, um, I can be on the correct course, okay? And it's not even asking me that. If I'm going in this direction, I actually have to turn this direction, right? So be careful here with this problem. They're asking me for, I'm gonna label this 
y. Okay, I'm trying to find y. But I can't find y until I figure out what this guy is. I don't know what other letter to call this. We'll call it z. Once I know z, I know that y is 180 minus z. But I need to figure out what z is first, OK? So I can use my law of sines now that I know all the three sides. So I'm going to say that I'm going to use the formula where I have cosine of z, OK? Which means that the side opposite is going to be the one over here on this side. So then I have um, 60 squared plus 9186. Oh, that's not the answer. I'm silly. X squared equals this, doesn't it? So why did I box that? If x squared equals this, then x equals the square root of that. So I'm going to do square root of that answer. And I get x is 96 miles. That makes more sense than this crazy giant number. So I get 96 miles. OK, so then here, because I was like, that's a huge number to be squaring. I get 96 squared minus 2 times 60 times 96 cosine of z. So then let's see, 150 squared. It's going to be some ugly numbers, but we're just working out the mechanics. So 3600 zero, zero plus 96 squared, 9216 um, minus, dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. Um, 2 times 60 times 96 is 11520. So then I have 22500 zero, zero, minus 3600 minus 9216. And then I'm going to divide that by negative 11520. I get that this number equals cosine of z. So z equals cosine inverse of this number. So cosine inverse of that number. And I get 147 degrees. So I know that z is 147 degrees. So then y is 180 degrees minus 147 degrees. which means y is 33 degrees. So what angle should I be turning? I should be turning at a 33 degree angle toward the east direction, right? Okay, now how much time has added to the trip because of this? Okay, so I've already traveled for four hours, right? And now I have to travel another 96 miles per hour. Well, through all of the speed and everything, we've been able to maintain a 50 miles, 15 miles per hour, right? So here, we're gonna have the 96 miles I have left for the trip times the 15 miles per hour. Actually, it's not times, it's multiply. I mean, it's divide. So 96 miles divided by 15 miles per hour. These are going to cancel. The hours goes up. And 96 divided by 15 is 6.4. But I'd already been traveling for four hours. So we get 10. Or how much time has been added to the trip? That's all they're asking me. So it's going to be 6.4 hours. Or you can just say about six hours, right? The same thing. Okay, so that is this section. There's not a whole lot of problems in this section. They are pretty much just solving the equations with the law of cosines. And then you may have a couple of problems where you're going to have to solve some more equations. But lucky for you, they'll give you the figures. 
that you'll need in order to solve those equations. You won't be trying to like come up with your own triangles and your own scenario. It'll all be given to you. But that is it for this section.